Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're gonna try and do a disassembly of this little guy right here. This is the Wii Knives uh, 606, I believe, and uh, it's an interesting little knife. It's a great knife in so many ways, but it's got one really stupid flaw, and I bet any of my longtime viewers already know what I'm gonna complain about. That's right, the stupid screws. Um, you know, they're, they're okay for everyday use. We'll talk about the problems in the full review, but, um... Today, uh, we're going to have to face them right on. What I do have, Andy, is this little tool here. This is a, uh, it's the tool that we provides, and you can see here that this tool has already been worn a little bit. I'm going to be very, very careful with this guy, because last time I tried to take apart a Wii, the tool stripped out as well. So, uh, there you go. Just looking at it, it looks like, uh, you know, these guys here are all holding this carbon fiber on. I don't think I actually need to... So looking at the inside here, I see that they just go straight into the titanium, and they, they shouldn't play a role here. Um, it's possible that this screw actually goes all the way through into this other side here, but I don't see that being an issue. So I think, practically speaking, all I have to do is remove this screw and this screw here, and the backside should lift off, and that's what I'm going to try and do. Um, but, you know, who, who actually knows? And I, if I'm in a situation where I feel like this is starting to strip out or I'm having trouble... I am going to just stop and, well, because nothing's worth injuring a lone knife here. So, this does appear to be spinning. That's good. Let's try this guy before I get too much deeper into it. There we go. I think that's coming loose. Again, I'm having to use a freaking keychain. Which is about the last shape I would want for us. I'm really bitter about these screws, in case you guys haven't noticed yet. Because just every damn part of this is a compromise. That shouldn't just need to be the case. So we pop this out. There we go. And now I'm going to see if I can pop the pivot the rest of the way out of here. And then maybe we'll be in business. Come on now. That's popping loose. That's good at least. Um, one other thing I should have noted is that this guy, uh, by the way, is uh, courtesy of Frankie and the Bud, who sent it along, and also I should note that the uh, there was a little bit of side-to-side uh, -side blade play in the knife uh, when I got it here, and so I'd like to see if I can address that. But all right, I think maybe I've got this guy popped open here. There could be one other screw. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm just going to see if I can lift things off. Oh, there we go. Okay, hey, 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 cool. We actually managed. Hey, interior milling. That's always nice. All righty. Um, interesting. Got little numbers on the inside of here. 151 and 133 over here. Um, let's keep these screws. The thicker one is the... Pi wow, look, even the pivot screw isn't very large. It just goes right in there. The action on it is already quite good. You can see it's using ceramic bearings here, which is nice. Um... Can't argue with that. The um, pivot itself is not free-spinning because you can see, hopefully, there's this little ledge right here and there's a corresponding cutout in the uh, in the little Wii thing, which, again, is very nice and helps to keep things oriented. You know, that's conscientiously done. But, uh, so, I mean, aside from the screws, so far, so good. The uh, interior of this looks a lot like a lot of the Wii mid-techs I've seen come around lately, some of which I can talk about, um, because, oh, a little bit of a spoiler there. Um, anyways, I look at a lot of prototypes, and that's actually a beautiful thing. Wii Knives is really, really great at making knives. Um, I, I very much appreciate what of their stuff I see, and especially when it's somebody else's that, you know, can use a fastener that's worth a damn, then, uh, you know, they tend to make really great stuff. But, uh, yeah. This is pretty grody up inside here, which is, it's nice to know that I'm making some changes here. One thing I'll say is there's not a whole lot of material around this pivot here. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a problem, but, um... You know, and especially given the knife isn't really marketing itself as a, uh, you know, serious hard-use tool or anything like that. But still, there, there's not a whole lot going on around the outside there. The bearings are kind of on an island here. And, uh, you know, so that might be a factor for you to keep in mind. But again, you know, that's to the level of if the steel fails, you got bigger problems. 
and that, and it says 35 VN steel, so probably gonna be fine. Interior stop pin, I'm sorry, exterior stop pin, but you can see it's kind of in an area where a lot of knives would have an internal stop pin track. Clean that out. Clean out the bearing race over here. And should go in the middle here. But see, they're really good at making knives. They just are really terrible at making fasteners. I always have to gauge as a reviewer sort of how much I'm going to let my own views influence things. I feel very strongly about the screw thing because I it is really genuinely ugly. Um, but, you know, I have to try and balance out the fact that the rest of the knife is quite excellent. So it's just like, how do you, how do you kind of overwhelm that? How do you, how do you balance those things when somebody does something just boneheaded? But the rest of it's great. You know, it's kind of a, well, aside from that, Miss Lincoln, how was the play sort of a situation? Can I still recommend something that's got a huge glare and freaking ugly flaw? I don't know. But whatever. Hopefully we'll fix the problem for me, and I'll be able to really love some of their future stuff, because this stuff is so damn good. Just cleaning off these bearings, and again, mentioning these are ceramic bearings, which is kind of a nice thing. You know, it seems to just generally speak and be the case that ceramic bearings are just a little bit smoother than your steel bearings. Is it something that I'm like, oh my god, this is untenable to use steel at a certain point? No, not remotely. But at the same time, there seems to be some upgrade from doing it. It's kind of nice to see here. That's probably part of the reason why this knife is so damn smooth, and it is indeed so damn smooth. There was no lock stick or anything. Also, you can see there's a ceramic detent ball on this guy, which is nice. And I gotta give credit, it's, uh, there's some interior milling, which helps with the balance overall. You can see here the stop pin has these three little machined-in pins. Um, I don't know if they're pin. Yeah, they're, they're kind of just little protuberances, if you will, that just land in there. Which, again, helps to give some rigidity. You can see here, these are the uh, screws holding in the CF. Very much do not need to undo those. And, um... Yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go here. So, let's put the little guy back together. Again, it's such a damn fine design. They did such a good job, but then they did that. Come on, we get you. Yeah. So, this is for Frankie and the bird, and the bird is, he's actually an expert in the, uh, in the friction and oiling and whatnot, and he has always maintained that I use too damn much oil, so in his honor, I'm going to use not too damn much oil. Really gonna back it down here. Just for him. I should probably be doing it throughout. I am, despite what some people on the internet might think, actually willing to learn on occasion. Which is nice. Gonna put a little bit of oil on the detent ball path here. Just wipe that off one more time. You can see here there's a little hollow where the uh, detent ball lives. A little bit there, a little bit there, there. Yeah. One thing that's kind of interesting about this knife that isn't the case often is that there's a uh, bit of, uh, the, the tent ball track actually goes outside the, uh, the the scales, which is not a bad thing, or frankly not a good thing either. It's just kind of a thing. But uh, what it does actually end up meaning is that the, uh, the knife is pretty... Uh, it's a little easier if you've got too much uh, lube on the detent ball path to uh, have that stock collecting crud. Alrighty. Well, that's right. I, I'm building this guy upside down. Okay, that's fine. I can live with this. No freaking problem. Because the show side is what needs to stay on because the uh, pivot screw comes in the other way. Okay, whatever. So... I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication right here and right here. Face the bearings that away. That should about do it. I'm on the lubricating, but it's all in the honor of the bird. Alrighty. This is not quite where it needs to go. I suspect it's an issue of the rotation of the little Wii logo coupled with the lock button. There we go. So it's popped in now. 
what I'm gonna do is drop on this little collar right here. There you go. Drop in this little screw. I'm gonna start off by hand tightening it just so I get it roughly into alignment and I don't use the damn tool any more often than I need to. Come on. You little bugger. There we go. That might have been it. Just releasing some more of the tension on the lock bar is allowing it to go in there. There we go. It's turning freely. Beautiful. I am not using any Loctite on this because with screws this bad, you just can't risk it. So Bud's just going to need to, uh, or Frankie for that matter, every so often just going to need to retighten the pivot. I'll put the pivot at, you know, a reasonable tightness for the moment. The centering was also slightly off before I um, put it back together. Both bearings are in there, so the centering should be okay now, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, anyways, here we go. I'm going to pop this in and just start turning. If I hold it this way, oh, you little... We, this is why we can't have nice things. If you're watching this, be embarrassed. Come on. I know Chinese. I'd lecture you in Chinese. Okay, so the centering seems actually better now. Action, the tent is still very nice. It's a little smoother. I can't argue with that. Centering is just ahead of the presentation side. Lock bar tension is strong, so I'm not super surprised by it, but, you know, that's that's A-OK. -okay. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it's not Loctited in. I don't want to risk it stripping this little guy out, but all that that means is they can just retighten that every so often and should be good to go. Alrighty, well, uh, there you go. We actually managed to get this little guy apart using their little included tool. At least they include the tool. But um, just imagine how much nicer that disassembly would have been if I could have just used the real driver. Alright, I'll stop hopping. Hope this has been interesting to you. Uh, we thank you for a knife that's very well designed in every way but one. And uh, everybody else, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.